Hey, how's it going guys? Captain Cooper here, and I want to start this video by ruining your day. It has been 7 months since God of War Ragnarok was shown to us. To some of us, this might not feel like a long time since we're constantly thinking about the game. But the good news is that, I'm pretty sure Sony's getting ready to show us some more footage, whether it be a trailer or demo and possibly a release date. But in the meantime, we have to keep going. And in today's video, I thought I would finally give you my prediction for the bosses of God of War Ragnarok. Believe it or not, this was actually one of the first videos that gave my channel some popularity. And I can't believe that so many people subscribed through this video, because it's truly cringy. So if you want to see some old school Captain Cuba, you can click on this link. Needless to say, I have changed the way I make my videos, and even my ideas regarding future boss battles have changed as well. This is why I wanted to remake this video as the release of God of War Ragnarok surely approaches. Now, some information seems to indicate that this game is going to be over 40 hours long. Twice as long as the first game, and given its open nature, I'm expecting a lot of optional boss battles. Something the first game really lacked. But I'm not gonna sit here for 2 hours musing about all of these boss battles. Instead, I just wanna give you 10 boss battles that I either think will happen, or I wish will happen. This has been a fun project for me since I can put on my fake God of War director's hat, and just give you a few ideas for the story and mechanics behind these possible fights. So with all that talk out of the way, let's get to my first prediction for the boss battles of God of War Ragnarok. The first one is an obvious one, but I truly believe the first boss battle in the game will be against Freya. The reason I say this is because when Kratos is fighting Freya in the trailer, he doesn't have the Blades of Chaos. But in other scenes, we see them on his back. This tells me that Santa Monica will start us off with this coat, but as soon as things get heated, no pun intended, Kratos will take it off and retrieve the Blades of Chaos again from his home, just like he did in the first game. It's very possible this boss fight won't even be too gameplay focused. The first part is going to be cinematic, just like we saw in the trailer. After that, I predict Kratos and Freya will fight and Santa Monica will use this moment in the story to teach the player how to do basic things such as attack and dodge, but against a character that will be more memorable than the first troll. So it's best not to think of this encounter as a boss fight, instead, think of it as being more of a tutorial. Now, I'm sure I don't have to say this, but I don't think this fight will result in Freya's death, as her story arc needs more time to develop. The real first fight of the game is probably the most anticipated one as well, Thor. Are you a calm and reasonable person? Given past God of War game intros, Santa Monica has the hard task on their hands to deliver an amazing first impression with Thor. They have to depict Thor as a god who can stand shoulder to shoulder with Kratos, and I think the best way to do this is by bringing some spectacle into the fight. So I think at first we're going to get the introduction of Thor, and because I don't want to embarrass myself, I'm not gonna try and do voice acting. Instead, I'm just gonna play a small section of an audiobook made by a friend. Did you really think your home would be safe after all you've done? Kill with kin? Father, what's he talking about? There's no need for further bloodshed. <laughs> You want to talk? Fine. Let's talk. You seem like a calm and reasonable person. Are you a calm and reasonable person? So after Kratos and Thor throw some threats at each other, the fight will begin. And I once said this jokingly, but after thinking about it, I think it might be a good idea. What if Thor arrives at Kratos' home on a chariot, being pulled by two magical goats? <laughs> And this chariot becomes a stage for the first fight of the game. Now I know what you're thinking, a chariot is not big enough for Kratos and Thor to fight, especially with Thor. But this is a place where Santa Monica could take some liberties from the mythology and make the chariot much bigger, similar to the one Helios had in Chains of Olympus. I like this idea because of its cinematic potential. Maybe this huge chariot could crash into Tyr's statue and that's the reason its head is knocked down in the trailer. The noise caused by the destruction of the statue would definitely wake up Jormungandr from his slumber, which will lead to his involvement in the fight. So Jormungandr bites one of Thor's goats in midair, and Kratos and Thor plummet to the ground below. However, before they can continue fighting, Jormungandr intervenes once again, and Thor is forced to leave for the time being. Uh, maybe making this video wasn't such a good idea, I'm hyping myself way too much. Anyway, I think the boss fight that follows the introduction will be against another Aesir god. In fact, I think it could be the goddess Sif, Thor's wife. In Norse mythology, Sif doesn't really have a big role. I'm pretty sure she's only mentioned in a story regarding the construction of Mjolnir. 
The whole story starts with Loki being mischievous by cutting Sif's beautiful hair. This obviously upsets Thor so much that he threatens Loki with death. Loki swears that he will make things right and he goes to the dwarves to create gifts for the gods. Among these gifts is Mjolnir and Sif's golden hair. Now in the God of War universe, this can't be how it happened. For one thing, Loki is not living with the gods in Asgard, and the construction of Mjolnir was ordered by Odin himself. Yet, Sif has golden hair. Which makes me think Santa Monica will change the reason behind Sif having golden hair. Or maybe in the God of War universe, she was simply born with it. But how she got her golden hair doesn't really matter to me. What I really care about is the possibility of making it her weapon. Maybe it's not really hair as we know it, but super thin metallic golden strands used to attack her enemies. In this hypothetical boss fight, she might even be able to grab objects with her hair and throw them at Kratos or Atreus. Think of Sindel from the Mortal Kombat games as an example. I believe this fight should take place soon after rescuing Tyr, and the death of Sif could serve to enrage Thor even more. Not only would Kratos be responsible for killing his sons, but his love interest as well. Sadly, it is still too early to tell if such a minor character will make it into the game. But this next boss fight, oh, I think this one is pretty much confirmed. I think the next fight should be against the mighty wolf Fenrir. And I know what some of you are going to say. How can we fight against Fenrir since he's one of the good guys? And I understand your question, but do you remember what Jörmungandr's response was when he thought Kratos was an Aesir god? If it wasn't for Mimir to stop him, a fight between Kratos and Jörmungandr would have broken out. And this is something I think is going to happen with Fenrir, especially since Kratos and Atreus will be accompanied by an actual Aesir god, Tyr. During this fight, I imagine Tyr will lose his arm to the legendary wolf just like in the mythology. But before Fenrir can finish the job, Atreus will be able to communicate with his son and calm him down. This moment could serve as a good character development for Atreus, as well as to show the player that Tyr is a trustworthy character since he sacrificed an arm for our protagonist. Not to mention that Santa Monica can do a lot with a giant wolf boss fight in terms of mechanics. Anyway, let's continue to the next boss fight. One of the things that really has me excited about God of War Ragnarok is the concept of Asgard really getting involved in Kratos' affairs. I don't know, it just gives me the feeling that we're going to be killing a lot of Norse gods, just like we did in God of War 3. And one of the gods I really want to fight is the blind Norse god Hodor. In Norse mythology, Hodor is the god responsible for killing Baldur after Loki tricked him into doing so. And as much as I want to see what the artists at Santa Monica do with this minor character, I'm more interested in how a boss fight with him could play out. If it were up to me, I would place this boss fight in a dark forest in Vanaheim, an environment the blind god will have an advantage over his enemies. Think of Daredevil as an example. However, Hodor would be wielding two small axes for close combat, as well as a bow for long range. This hypothetical boss fight could be similar to the Desert of Lost Souls section in God of War 1, where the player has to listen very carefully for his footsteps. Maybe PlayStation 5 users could take advantage of the console's 3D audio for an even better experience. I know this wouldn't be a boss fight that falls into the epic category of the series, but I think it would add a lot more depth to a game with a combat system that requires you to be on the edge of your seat and waiting for an opportunity to attack. For the next fight, I wish Santa Monica would reach back a little to the older games in the series and bring back some spectacle. And I know I mentioned the word spectacle when I talked about the intro fight with Thor, which I think we'll have plenty. But I'm talking about that feeling of being a complete badass when you played God of War 3. I think Santa Monica needs to let us fight at least one giant. And I'm talking about a real giant, the size of Thamur if you want an example. Now I know from a story perspective this doesn't really make much sense given that the giants are the good guys. But maybe this could be a rogue giant, one that betrayed his kind in service of Asgard, similar to Hecatonchires in God of War Ascension. Hopefully this fight could be modeled after the boss fights you see in Shadow of the Colossus. Atreus would summon a spirit horse big enough for Kratos and Atreus to ride, and they would use this speed to attack parts of his legs and bring the giant down to his knees. Then Kratos and Atreus would find a way to get on top of him and proceed to defeat him. This boss fight could even be against the giant Surtur, as he tests Kratos and Atreus to know if they're truly capable of taking on the Aesir gods. Look, out of all of the ideas on my list, this is the one I really don't think is going to happen. This boss fight would be too big of a departure from the current formula of the series. And even if it were to fit the formula, I think Santa Monica would have a hard time making this fight work on a PS4 console. But hey, an OG God of War fan can dream, alright? 
Next is a fight that the more I think about, the more I think will happen. A dual fight against Freya and Thor. This fight would ideally take place sometime around the middle of the story. For some reason, Kratos and Atreus have to go to the base of the world tree, and there they will encounter Freya and Thor. Thor is ready for round 2 against Kratos and is now sporting his magical strength belt. Freya is also eager for round 2 and is now sporting her old Valkyrie armor for more protection. From a mechanical point of view, this fight will be similar to Magni and Modi, where the player has to learn the patterns of two enemies at the same time. However, this fight will not end with any of these characters dying. Instead, the fight might even start Ragnarok itself. As you guys know, the clash between Thor and Jormungandr was so big that it splintered the world tree and sent Jormungandr back in time. Well, what do you think will happen when Kratos and Thor fight the second time? I suspect the world tree will shatter and this will have two side effects. First, it will send Kratos and Atreus back in time and during this section of the game, they will blow the horn. And number two, the shattering of the world tree will also cause Ragnarok because as you guys know, the tree sustains all life in the realms. Once Kratos and Atreus return to their timeline, they will see the destruction they caused after the fight with Freya and Thor and will maybe go back to Greece to retrieve a very important item that will help them. Trust me, just watch this video, it will blow your mind. But once in Greece, they will have to fight a god or goddess from Kratos' old home, one that truly hates him. These gods could either be Apollo or Artemis, and since they're siblings, why not both? The reason I want these two characters to make some kind of appearance in the next game is because we know they exist, but for some reason, they never made it into the previous games, at least not as bosses. Now, I don't want to get into my theory as to why they were absent all this time. That will be a video for another day. Instead, I want to focus on the potential this fight could have from a story perspective. Even though Kratos opened up to his son about killing his father, he still didn't mention the moment he's most ashamed of. This is a moment I don't think Kratos will ever willingly tell his son about. And what better way to have this conversation if Kratos is forced to return to Greece with his son? Their mission in Greece would take them to a place where all the remaining Greek gods have been forced to live after humans became the ruling force in Greece. In this bad part of town, Kratos will see weak versions of Morpheus, Aphrodite, Dionysius, and other gods who survived the events of God of War 3. The leaders of these gods could either be Apollo or Artemis or maybe both. But before fighting Kratos, I picture one of these gods mentioning to Atreus what his father did to his first family. But before Atreus can ask a question, Artemis will start firing arrows at them. Kratos and Atreus will kill them both, retrieve whatever they came looking for, and then have a serious talk about his father's past. This conversation might even cause some distrust on Atreus' part and might lead to his separation from his father as the Jotunheim mural seems to indicate. Next we have a boss fight that I'm sure everyone hopes will be in the game, Heimdall. First of all, can we just admire how cool this character is in Norse mythology? He's called the Watchman of the Gods. He has foreknowledge, he doesn't need sleep, he can see for miles ahead. He also has the job of blowing his horn whenever the invasion of the giants begins during Ragnarok. Aside from Thor, he seems like the perfect opponent for Kratos. So it will be very disappointing if we don't get to fight him at least once in the game. But how exactly is this fight going to play out? In my opinion, this fight will either take place as Kratos and Atreus attempt to leave Asgard and are confronted by Heimdall, or if we follow the mythology closer, it will happen during the start of Ragnarok as the giants invade Asgard. But I don't really care when we fight him, I care about where. I don't want to fight Heimdall in either Svartalheim, Midgard, Vanaheim, not even Valhalla. I want to fight him on the Rainbow Bridge. Any other place will be unacceptable. This is because I'm dying to see this location and because it could also play into the mechanics of the fight itself. Now, of course I don't know how they will design Heimdall, but I want to show you this amazing fan art made by Alex Tomasino, which depicts Heimdall wielding a massive horn. If a horn of these proportions ends up making it into the game, it's possible Heimdall could use its power to blow Kratos and Atreus off the Rainbow Bridge, sending them straight to their deaths. To avoid this, the player could use the new grapple mechanic to reach a place where the horn's heirs can't get them. Bottom line, I just want to fight Heimdall, and I'm sure Santa Monica won't disappoint. Now for the most part, I've been focusing on the evil Aesir gods, but what about the Vanir deities? I know Freya will be one of these epic boss fights, but what about all of her other family members? Will they be bosses as well? Well, look, as much as I want God of War Ragnarok to have 120 bosses just like Elden Ring, I know this won't happen for two reasons. God of War Ragnarok will not be an open world game, and having these many boss fights will simply ruin the pacing of the game. 
The second reason is that Vanir deities despise the Aesir gods just like the giants do, so maybe they will be an ally to Kratos and Atreus. But there is one Vanir god that I wholeheartedly believe will be a boss fight, Freyr. The reason I think Freyr will be a boss fight is simply because we already saw Kratos fighting some light elves, and Freyr is the ruler of all the elves, so Kratos fighting the elves is showing me that Freyr will be an enemy. If it were up to me, I would depict Freyr as an insane god, even crazier than Baldur. This is because from God of War lore we know that some Aesir gods tried to kill him after they failed to understand how to use the magic taught to them by Freyr. It's not very specific how they tried to torture him, but we know for sure that they tried to burn him alive. So for his design in God of War Ragnarok, I wish to see him with burn marks all over his body. Maybe a nervous twitch to show how traumatized he was left after the Aesir gods tortured him. At first, Kratos and Atreus could reach out to him as an ally, but upon seeing his volatile nature and how all he wants is vengeance against the Aesir gods, Kratos might be hesitant to work with them. After all, Kratos does not want an all-out war with the Aesir gods. But Freyr might see this as a sign that Kratos and Atreus are on the side of the Aesir gods, and boom, you have a boss fight with Freyr. Lastly, one of the things I hope happens in this fight is Kratos taking Freyr's sword for himself. Norse mythology is full of amazing weapons for a video game setting, and Freyr's sword, which has the ability to fight by itself, might be a nice addition to Kratos' arsenal. So there you have it guys, my top 10 predictions for the bosses of God of War Ragnarok. There's honestly a lot more bosses I think will make it into the game, but I just didn't want to make this video too long. And if you're wondering why I didn't mention Odin in this list, it's because a few weeks back, I uploaded a video talking about how a fight with him might go down, so I didn't want to repeat what I said in that video. But if you want to learn what I think about a fight with Odin might look like, I suggest you click on this link. As always, I want to thank all of my members for supporting the channel monthly. People like Senex, Edge, Anhad Miglani, and the Marked Reaper to name a few, are a big reason this channel is still standing. I really couldn't upload any of these videos without your support. I would also like to thank everyone who likes and shares my videos. I know it doesn't seem like much, but trust me, it really does help. So with that said, don't forget to subscribe for more God of War content, and as always remember, go forth in the name of Ragnarok.